Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Mm, nice to have you here. So we'll start mm. with a brief introduction. Ich bin ein Samatext consultant and engineer. Uh, I'm also happen to be a sole cookbook author. Uh, the series uh, also co-authored the Elasticsearch server book. We are preparing the next one called Mastering Elasticsearch. I'm also a co-founder of SolarPL, where we try to share knowledge about solar. And I'm a father uh, of two great children and a husband. So what we all try to talk today is a comparison, a brief comparison of Apache Solar and Elasticsearch. Mm, we'll start with some basics. Uh, as you may know, Apache Solar, the current version, is based on Lucene 3.4. The same comes with Elasticsearch when, with, at least with the newest release, the 0.90.1, uh, which is packed with Lucene 4.3 for and uses all the goodies that comes with it. But uh, what we expect from the, currently from an open source search engine that is based on Lucene? We expect scalability, we expect fault tolerance, uh, high availability, we expect features. Uh, not only when it comes to full text search, but also some analysis, maybe some administration features. We expect manageability, ease of installation. We don't want to spend days on installation. We want to get it right and easy. Uh, we expect tools to be built around it. And of course, we expect support, both from commercial companies and the community. Uh, if we would look at the expectations versus the reality, we'll see that solar is b working, the solar cloud at least, uh, is working with Zookeeper uh, to create a clusters. Uh, it has a leader per shard, and on the other side, with the Elasticsearch, we have only Elasticsearch nodes, Elasticsearch is able to handle itself, and we have a single leader called master. Of course, both those search servers are distributed, fault tolerant, and have automatic leader election with something bad happened with the uh, initial leader that was elected. Of course, there wouldn't be those search engines if there wouldn't be a community around it. Let's, so let's start with the committers. If you look at the top time committers for Apache Solar, you would see Ionic on top. Uh, this is a five-year trend actually being shown. Uh, then we have Mark Miller and Robert, which is, I guess, here? Yeah, Robert is here. Uh, in case of Elasticsearch, as you may expect, we have Shai Bannon on top, those two accounts from GitHub. Uh, we have Martin Van Gonigan and Igor Motov. Uh, those are the top three. Uh, the active contributors vary from month to month and year to year. And in case of Solar, the top uh, top contributors per month, we can see somewhere between 2012 and 2013, when I think that 2.4.0 was being released. Uh, and then it varies for about more than some, near than 20, more than 10. Uh, in case of Elasticsearch, we can see the peak also uh, when the release of uh, 0.90 was approaching. And we see about 10, 10 kilometers at least being shown currently by the application I used for statistics. Uh, the code, of course, the code is pretty important. We can't see anything about the quality of code, but we can see the lines. Uh, in, ca in case of uh, solar, we have more than 220K of uh, co uh, base code lines. And in case of Elasticsearch, we have more than 300,000. Uh, commits per month are varying. We also we like statistics at Sematex, so we, we do this kind of things. Uh, uh, the lines, sorry, the commits per month are about more for solar. There are more than 100. Uh, in case of, uh, of varying to almost 200. And in case of Elasticsearch, we have something, something above the 100. The mailing lists. Uh, you can see that on the mailing list, they are pretty active. The users are pretty active. We get responses pretty on every question you ask, if you would like. You can see that in case of Apache Solar, it's about 1,000 messages per week, because those are weekly, weekly statistics. So we get about 4,000 4, per month. It's pretty, pretty nice. In case of Elasticsearch, it, it varies a bit more. We don't have the statistics for previous, year, previous um, years because there were almost none until then. And then we have the, you can see the statistics, which are above, above the 500 per, per week. 
of course, we like the trends. And you can see that solar is more mature. It was released earlier than Elasticsearch. And you can see the top line, which is uh, showing the trends for that Google tends to show us. And Elasticsearch is getting the going to a higher and higher as more people to search about it, more people try to get it, and more people are interested in it. Of course, there uh, would be uh, us here if we are, we're not interested in the technical details. So the basics about those are the collection and index. Collection in solar, solar cloud, is the main logical index uh, that can be spread among multiple nodes uh, in the cluster. In case of Elasticsearch, the main structure is called an index. Uh, in Apache Solar, the index structure can be defined in the schema, XML file. Uh, it allows us to automatically copy values. It allows us to have dynamic fields. It allows us to use the newly introduced in uh, Lucene for all the custom similarities that were implemented, and of course, the custom postings format, which, allowed us to, which allows us to uh, store the index in a different format than the default ones. And we can have multiple documents, but they need to share the same schema in the, in the single index. And the schema can be read through the, using the API, which, were, which was a functionality introduced in 4.3. Uh, in case of Elasticsearch, we have so-called schema-less. Elasticsearch can guess what field, what, if you send the data to Elasticsearch, it can guess what are the field types uh, you probably want to, want to use. Of course, we can define the fields and, ty and types with an HTTP API. Uh, we, can have, we can have multi fields, something more or less similar to dynamic fields in solar. We can have uh, to copy fields in solar. We can have nested and parent child documents. Of course, it also leverages the functionality of custom similarity, a custom postings format. Multiple documents can have mul uh, different structure with completely different fields uh, using the types. And the schema and the types and all the, all the document processing can be uh, read and written using the API. Elasticsearch provides. Mm. Let's get back a bit to shards and to index shards and replicas. Uh, each index or collection can have many shards, uh, which can be which the index can be divided into. Uh, each of the shard can have one or zero replica or more, mm, which are automatically updated, and they can become leaders if something bad happens to the primary shard or the leader shard. Uh, the configuration in solar is stored in static config uh, called solar config XML, can be reloaded during collection core reload. Uh, not all the uh, properties can be reloaded. The one in the index configuration can't be. Uh, in Elasticsearch, we have a static uh, Elasticsearch YML file, which can store uh, cluster configuration, not node configuration. It can be changed. It's changeable during write, runtime, and uh, but not all properties. But usually, all the properties that are stored in Elasticsearch YML can be uh, also posted to Elasticsearch using the API. The discovery. The discovery is a process of discovering nodes uh, and forming a cluster. So. Uh, in terms of Apache Solar, uh, we have Zookeeper that is responsible for holding the cluster state and to, go to um, manage the communication between the nodes. In terms of last, uh, when it comes to Elasticsearch, there is a Zen discovery that is a, build, is a module uh, of Elasticsearch that uh, uh, manages the uh, communication. Uh, of course, when it comes to Solar, it requires additional software to be present, the Zookeeper, Zookeeper Ensemble, to, uh, to don't, so we don't have a single point of failure. It prevents split brain situation, and it also holds collection configurations. It came, when it comes to Elasticsearch, we have automatic nodes discovery when you launch a new node, and it shares the same cluster name. Um, Elasticsearch will, using the multicast or unicast discovery methods, it will automatically uh, try to join that new node and for form, another, form the cluster if, if only a single node was present, or 
add the node to the cluster. Of course, there is an automatic master detection, and we have two-way failure detection when where master pings all the nodes, and all the nodes are checking the master's existence and uh, uh, if it works correctly. Uh, both servers um, provide HTTP API um, when it comes to Elasticsearch. Uh, we can use both the query string or sophisticated JSONs with, uh, ne with queries. Uh, with Solar, we have the query string uh, when we can add parameters to use all the functionalities. And they both provide specialized Java API to connect to them and talk to them if you are using Java uh, clients. Oh, and there are multiple libraries available for both of, the, of those search engines. Mm. In terms of when we are talking about queries, uh, the one thing that SOAR has that Elasticsearch doesn't is the results grouping. We can group our documents that uh, uh, are re returned uh, for a query uh, based on multiple uh, field values, based on the query, or based on the function query of, uh, value of the function query. It's nice if you, for example, want to go, uh, show only a few documents for a, a company with a given name or for a client. Mm, in case of Elasticsearch, uh, the functionality that uh, Solar doesn't have is, a, is, for example, a prospective search. Prospective search uh, is somehow the opposite of a normal indexing and searching. Instead of uh, storing documents, you store queries. And you send a document and see what, which queries are matching the document. You can imagine this functionality as some kind of alerting. Uh, imagine you have a company that, uh, want, that observes social media uh, and uh, your clients register queries, and then you send documents from the social media that are, for example, tweet posts, Twitter tweets, or Facebook posts, and they match given queries. You can ret return them and see uh, which, which queries matched. Of course, uh, for both of these search engines, we expect a variety of queries, the full, text, the full text search. So we expect not only this, but we also want to control the relevancy of those. So we need to control the score calculation. We want to use different query parsers. And of course, we want to use uh, advanced uh, Lucene queries, not only uh, standard Boolean ones, right? Uh, in terms of score calculation, at least from my point of view, we look for uh, controlling the importance of documents, queries, terms, phrases. We look for the possibility of leveraging not only the standard uh, TFIDF uh, similarity, but we also want to use the newest one that were introduced in 4.0 Lucene, uh, like BN25, for example. And of course, we want also to be able to use the TFIDF. Mm. In case of Solar, of course, we have the index time boosting. We can use the query, and of course, the query time boost, which we can affect the terms, fields, phrases. We can use function queries and subqueries to uh, alter the relevance of our docu of our queries. Uh, in terms of Elasticsearch, we also has the index time boosting, but we, in ca uh, at query time, we also can control the terms, phrases, but. Elasticsearch provides us with different queries, for example, a custom, a custom score, the constant score one. We can cal calculate distributed term frequencies. We have a negative and positive boosting, and we can use scripts to alter the um, relevance. If we imagine we can take a field, uh, we can write a script to take a field, uh, multiply it by something, or uh, to write a Java. Uh, plugin that will provide a native script for Elasticsearch to alter the uh, mm, score of documents. The one thing introduced in 019 Elasticsearch is the rescore functionality, uh, which reorders the top hit documents based on another query. Uh, it's done because you don't want to usually reorder the whole, whole, the whole document base that was returned by your query. but uh, Instead, you want only the top ones that are shown, for example, to the user to be reordered based on some other criteria. Currently, we can use another query. Uh, this functionality is executed on shards before, there are, before the results are returned to the uh, gathering node. And they are not executed during scan and count, because it doesn't make sense, actually, to, because you are only interested in counts, for example, when it, when it comes to count. Uh, Elasticsearch also 
maybe it's not only a pure query uh, thing, but Elasticsearch allows us to use nested objects which are stored nearby in the index, nearby the original documents, the parent ones, let's call the parent ones. Uh, they can um, provide us the possibility of uh, storing uh, documents that are not flat. Um, if you would like to, for example, store uh, different colors and types of shirts for your e-commerce uh, application, you can do that with nested objects, and if you query uh, with a special query type, uh, you can uh, only return the ones that match not a single attribute, but for example, a few fields that are the building the nested documents. And the nice feature is that the top-level documents uh, can be sorted on the basis of what it's in the uh, nested documents. In case of Solar, we have the parent-child relationship. Uh, it's used at query time. It allows multi-core joins, and this is a simple query that allows us to join multiple multiple documents, more or less, not as sophisticated as SQ, SQL uh, joins, but uh, does its work. Uh, Elasticsearch also provides the parent-child function functionality. Mm, however, it doesn't. It needs to be those documents needs to be properly indexed. Uh, you need to have a uh, parent set when you uh, index the document, and the, you can retrieve the documents using a special queries and filters, like the has child, has parent, and top children. Mm. Of course, both provide filtering results. They are used to not only narrow down the, resu the results of our queries, but also they are very good candidates for caching and performance boosting if you do that right. Uh, so in Solar, they are addictive. Uh, you can use the FQ parameter to uh, add multiple uh, function queries, and they will be together uh, added with the end operator. They can use different query parser, local params, and they narrow down the fascinating results. Uh, in case of Elasticsearch, the filters can be defined using the query uh, DSL and sent along with queries. They then don't narrow down the fascinating results and can be used to alter score calculation with custom score filters, for example. Uh, both provide faceting uh, when the, mm, the similar things are the terms, range, and query facets, uh, term statistics. Uh, maybe it's not uh, faceting but in solar, but it's a statistical component. And, of course, special distance. Uh, the thing that differs in both, that solar has a pivot facets, uh, that can uh, work on and show you the tree, basically the tree of, of faceting. So, for example, if you would like to have uh, documents grouped in, fa in faceting, like for first for category, then for, for based on price, you can do that with pivot. And Elasticsearch provides histograms hmm, faceting. Mm, both uh, Sol 4.0 and uh, after that, and Elasticsearch provides real-time real -time handlers. What is real-time? It's, uh, as you know, uh, in order to see the documents in Lucene, you need to refresh the searcher. Reopen it or refresh. Uh, uh, this is where real-time real sometimes uh, come in handy, because you don't need searcher reopening here, uh, but you can read the documents that were just sent to indexing, because they will be read by both from the transaction log. In case of Solar, you have a separate real-time get handler to do that. You have that uh, by default uh, s uh, configured in Solar XML. And in case of Elasticsearch, we have the multi-get API and the get API that allows us to fetch documents, even if they were not yet indexed. Uh, that can come in handy uh, when you need uh, the information if the document was sent and it will be indexed somewhere in the near future. Uh, of course, the data handling is also very important when it comes to, because without the data uh, being indexed uh, to a search engine, we wouldn't have something to search on. So in case of uh, Solar, we, can, we are allowed to use different formats. Uh, for example, those are XML, JSON, comma-separated uh, ones, and of course the bi binary responses, for example. We can get the data in Java, in Java binary and PHP binary if you want. In Elasticsearch, it's JSON in, JSON out, and YAML. 
uh, and both provide uh, single batch indexing uh, with the case where Elasticsearch uh, allows us, for example, to use the update API uh, in, um, batch, uh, in batch processing. You've the newly, intro, the newly released 0.90.1 version. You can check that out. Uh, both Elasticsearch and Solar provides uh, partial document updates. Uh, the, this functionality is not based on Lucene 3837 proposed by Andrzej Białecki. It's uh, a kind of server-side document reindexing when uh, the search engine gets the document you it's, uh, that, and the fields that are stored in case of Solar and, for example, the source field in, in case of Elasticsearch uh, and uh, adds the um, changes that were done and reindexes the, the document once again. It can be used, for example, to decrease the network traffic or if it's a uh, hard thing to do on the application side when you don't know the documents, uh, the whole document structure during update, you can use the update API and it will do its work. In case of uh, Solar, it of course requires the version field. Uh, for the optimistic locking, it's set to the standard request handler and the, so for the example call to this uh, API looks like this. We would like to update the document. In case of Elasticsearch, we have also the partial document update uh, endpoint exposed that we can use. It supports additional parameters that we can use standard to st in standard by in Elasticsearch, like routing, parent, replication, percolate, and it uses scripts to perform document updates. And the uh, example call is shown. In case of Solar, when it comes to administrative functions, we, one of the nice things is the collection API. It allows us to create, reload, uh, delete collections, but also split shards. This is something that is new, something that is very nice, because you don't need to, at least, uh, you don't need to currently uh, over shard. Uh, you don't need to create too many shards uh, before uh, you can just leave it and split it uh, later. Uh, in Elasticsearch, the indices REST API allows creation, deletion, closing and uh, reopening of the index, so refreshing and checking the existence if it's all provided by the, by the API. Let's get a bit back and see how coll uh, collection split works. For example, let's uh, assume that we have a single collection called collection one. We have a single shard in that collection called shard one, and it's located on the uh, machine with the given IP address. If we would send the following um, command to Solar, what we would get in results is something like this. The collection would be split into two shards, the shard 1.1 one, one and shard 1.0, oh, uh, and though, of course, also the shard 1 would be, uh, would be left, we can delete it, but the shard 1.1 one, one and 1.0 one, oh should uh, and will have the documents from the original shard split among those. It's a very nice feature. If you use Solar, you can try it out. It works. Uh, it was anticipated mm, highly, uh, especially in my case. Uh, when it comes to cluster monitoring, uh, Apache Solar uh, provides us with multiple ambients that can be accessed using the JMX. And in case of Elasticsearch, we don't have the JMX opened. But instead, we have uh, multiple rest points uh, where we can fetch different statistics, like the health and state check, notes information, case statistics, segments information. You can see all the, <coughs> sorry, all the things that Elasticsearch stores in terms of statistics, and you can read that using the API. Mm. Uh, you can also update the those uh, most of the uh, function most of the. In configuration options using the cluster settings uh, update. Like you can uh, do rebalancing, you can uh, alter recovery configuration, you can alter allocation, you can change config cluster configuration properties. For example, if you would like to uh, alter the allocation of shards, you could say, I want the uh, IP, a node with IP, the given IP address to be excluded from allocation. Or we if we would like to only do that for a single index, we would say, hey, I want to include that node, to be, the shards to be only for that index, semi-text, to be only allocated on the nodes with the given tags, node one and node two. It's quite nice because uh, if no Elasticsearch can move the shards around during the cluster and you can control it. It doesn't work automatically, but sometimes you need to control it. 
uh, you can also, as I said, move shards and replicas around the cluster uh, on demand. For example, if you would like to move the index semantics, the shards zero of the index semantics from node one to node two, we can do that with the following command. We can also force uh, index allocation if uh, some, by, by, for example, we've cancelled the allocation and we want to allocate it uh, in the future, we can force the allocation by using uh, the command, you see, the allocate command. And now I have a question for you, because uh, you'll see what my point of view is in a f e just in a few seconds. I would like to ask you, what do you think? Is Apache Solar the winner? No, 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 once again. So, who thinks that Apache Solar wins here? Uh, more hands, more hands, more hands. <laughs> okay, why? <laughs> okay, come, come to me after the talk, please. Uh, and now, who thinks that Elasticsearch is the winner? So you don't, and uh, the other people in the audience don't see a clear winner here? <laughs> so, uh, if you want to see my point of view, I think that we are all the winners here. There is no single, single winner around with when it comes to Apache Solar or Elasticsearch. We know, at least from my point of view as a consultant and a software engineer that works on, mm, on different products, uh, we tend to use the right product for the, that will do its job. And uh, we don't say, okay, we will use Elasticsearch for now. Or, oh no, we throw away Elasticsearch and we use Solar. No, that's not the case. We choose and we suggest to our clients that they should use the software that will do its job in, in terms of uh, what it's supposed to be, be done. If you need grouping, go for solar. If you need manageability, uh, go for Elasticsearch. Thank you very much. If you want to uh, contact me, here's my information. Thank you once again for being here.